my bosom son in the gospel, Bishop David Abioye, who is a carrier of the mandate, who has been with me all of his life. The Spirit of God is in him, and the Spirit upon his father is on him. Even the greatest of stories sometimes have the simplest of beginnings, like when the paths of two Davids divinely crossed. As I saw him, something in my heart spoke, uh, connoting destiny meeting. And I can't forget, there, there was a leap in my soul. There was a fire ignited in me when I saw his zeal. Um, and a sense of commitment. This is dated back to January 1980, to be very specific. I was uh, approaching my 19th birthday uh, for March that year. As a young student, I met him in um, the fellowship. Initially, not on platform of ministry, but of relationship, among brethren. I believe that there is an orchestration, a divine orchestration by the Spirit for me to meet with Him and for Him to meet with me and receive me. Because like I said, ever since we met in January 1980, there is that knitting of the Spirit and so smoothly. So, upon receiving the vision, which I believe also God had in mind for bringing that union, that relationship together. It was easy to flow. Through the refining fires of both time and service, the life of Brother David Abioye began bearing fruits, both in the ministry and in the lives of people around him. Don't let the poverty mentality hold you down by asking, ah, this thing they are talking about, will it ever become my turn? Now, prosperity will make it your turn. Without a stretch, there cannot be a spread. So when you find yourself being stretched, it's because there's a spread awaiting you. But uh, look at it, um, you know, we all have seasons when we are stretched, even in followership, in our stewardship. There are times you like a, you are stretched in your spirit, in your mind, and even physically. So there are times you face such challenges, you feel, oh, this is getting much, but I have to do the will of God. Um, at moments of beginning, um, then ask or assign to start church work. Stretchy. Uh, no bed, laying mattress on the bench to sleep. Uh, no cooling system, but under some wonderful fan, making noise. <laughs> you know, uh, hanging around here and there. But like I said, the fact that one's attitude is right didn't make you feel that those things came so sometimes some things comes your way because you are not focusing on it. it it comes to pass which i believe is something we have to put in mind every event comes to pass except you hold to it <laughs> there are of course days of uh, lean or no food to eat there are days you want to buy some things, you can't buy it because you, you lack the economic power. For instance, there was a day I was to buy a six kobo bread. Bread then was six kobo, but I had only five kobo. I wanted to eat bread, so I had to advise my taste. <laughs> are you following me? There were days when uh, you have plenty of soup, but very few pieces of meat. Yet you have to get excited. Uh, there are days when you have uh, people around you who are living in pleasure and you are managing things 
So all of, if we can describe all those ones as days of uh, challenges, uh, but like I said, if you see the end, they don't get your attention. As soon as he came, I saw that this man has a vision. I'm not looking for his television, but I'm looking for vision. He's a man running with vision and is all there to serve. Ever since I met him, he has always been serving. And after we got married, oh my good God, I got home after marriage and I met Bench. What? Is this where we are going to stay? Or is it, maybe he brought me to church before taking me home. I saw Bench. Uh -uh. Before the marriage, before I came, he made a bed. So it's the bed that is in our bedroom. But the settee, every other thing is church bench. And we have church in the house. So there's nowhere you are running to. Everything is there in the house. But to the glory of God, we have been together from nothing. But I could see vision. He running with vision. I was all out and said, anywhere you are going, just like Ruth said, your God will be my God. Let's go all the way. Even when there was nothing at home, still continue like that. To the glory of God and God met us where we are day to day. Now, please come, Bishop Abioye. You are my first praise worship leader. You hear a very sonorous anointed voice right now. Give me oil in my lamp, keep me burning. Give me oil in my lamp, I pray. Give me oil in my lamp, keep me burning. Keep me burning till the bright groom comes. I was privileged to join the Living Faith Ministry Church in 1988. And I could see zeal and commitment in Bishop Abuye. He represents an embodiment and epitome of kingdom service, kingdom addiction. He was there in every service to be sure every service moves on well. We want to be sure everything went fair, that Jesus Christ is exalted in every service. I am privileged to be among the force of those people in Maiduguri that have contact with the bishop in his early ministry in my degree. You can talk about Bishop Abiwe without remembering or feeling his humility, his love, his concern about life. My first encounter with him as a young man was then, about 30 years ago in Bonu State. He demonstrated seriousness of purpose, wisdom and deep knowledge of the word of God in all his ministrations. The first opportunity to do church work was in 1987 when I was assigned to plant the church, one of the first five churches in the ministry in Meduguri then. I was there at the first instance for three years. Before we got in there, I observed that churches were uh, running in ethnic city line. You know, you have Hausa Church, Hebo Church, Yoruba Church, you know, and all of that. But by the grace of God, through relationship, we were able to blend in that church. We had not less than 30% indigenous people, which is very uncommon. And all because I like to, uh, I like to drive relationship with people. So those were great days. Uh, then we were in a, a three bedroom uh, bungalow. Everything, like I used to say mostly, it was in suit. You know, the bedroom was there, the kitchen was there, the office was there, the church was in the sitting room. So that saved me cost of traveling. <laughs> I just take a few steps from the bedroom and I'm there in the church. 
So uh, we started with benches uh, that the money could afford. Um, so I was a benchman everywhere, in my bedroom, the sitting room, even our dining was bench. So uh, money was much then. My office desk was a very wonderful one. I requested uh, one key church member to help me make a table from their construction site. He asked me for money and I, asked, uh, I requested, don't you have off-court wood? So by the time they put the wood together and made the table, uh, one leg was down, the other leg was up. <laughs> so I looked for bottleneck to shock it. But very exciting. In the midst of that, I still called cameraman to snap me some wonderful photograph and all of that with a few books I had. So we had no instrument, not even tambourine. Uh, then the day we were blessed with two tambourines, I was so excited, I called um, seven of our men, one after the other, to come and thank God for it openly. So we had all those exciting moments. Nobody was mobile. The first day somebody rode bicycle to the church, I had to publicly announce it that finally our church has become our church of mobility. That at least we have somebody <laughs> who could move uh, you know, faster than legs. So, so everything came in full of excitement. One day I, on Saturday, I called for red oxide that they used to paint uh, metal roofs. I mean, uh, and all of that. So painted the floor. And on Sunday, people came to church and said, "Aren't you glad? Grateful to God? Your church is a red carpeted church." So <laughs> it was exciting. So those are part of the things that makes me not to think that I went through any difficulty. The podium was very powerful, very shaky, so sometimes I hold it. Uh, it appeared as if the anointing was flowing from it so anytime I'm teaching and all of that. So, and uh, gradually we began to have some fellows who play instruments when we invite them to come to sing. And after the singing, they go out with their instruments. But all well, was full of excitement um, in serving God. So those are memorable moments. And then, of course, um, after the three years, uh, towards the end of the three years, I had a call by God's servant, Bishop Udipo, asking me to come to Garden of Faith, uh, which was our headquarter church then. Um, so the Lord directed him that I should be the pastor over the people. That was the time he was being directed by God to go to Lagos. And according to him, when he asked God, God told him, hey, get my son, David. He will be the pastor over the people. So I was there, had the privilege of pastoring for two years in Garden of Faith, exciting moment. Um, of course, I was assigned to go back to Meduguri um, for a space of under two years before finally coming back to Garden of Faith in January 95. Um, and from there, I had a longer stay and God helped us. The church grew explosively under the grace of God. Once you are prepared, you don't need to beg God to come down. Preparation signals God to come down. There is no way God will not go down when he finds his people prepared. God allowed me, not just your pastor, to plant three churches along the airport road here. And all that I did, all that I was saying, all that I was teaching, were actually the things I have had over the years from Bishop David Abiyi. If you're a teacher, your joy is to have students. If you have means, your joy is to have people to bless. So you always need people. So meeting people, relating with people, serving people is 
one of my greatest joy in life. Meeting, relating, serving people. And that's why somehow um, I'm endeared towards people and people are endeared towards me because I believe that everybody that comes my way should have a great part of me. So, but the fundamental thing, like I've said, is I love people because I know you can do without people. I believe that the essence of creation is relationship, touching lives and uh, uh, at our little corner then. Clearly, a man with a heart for God, but even more so, a leader with a heart for his people. Countless of testimonies of transformation have been credited to him. I've not seen God, though. but you see, I saw God in Bishop Abiyui. So I'm running with him because I saw God in him. If you say pride, you can't find it in Bishop Abiyui. I'm sorry. If you say he's looking for money, you can't find it in him. The only thing you can find in him, service. And two, to raise leaders. To raise leaders. That's him. You can find those things. He has fathered so many. He has a minister to so many. He has taught so many to the glory of God. He has touched so many lives. I don't know what to tell you, but I'm grateful. When we were younger, during his break time, he would rush back home. Those times when I would be watching my um, Christian cartoons and all these kiddie sprays at that time. And you just see him walking. He would just dance, dance, dance with you, dance with you. So you are so engulfed with the dancing. All of a sudden, you turn back, he has gone. You are, you do, he has gone back to work. But, but those memories, I never forgot those memories. As little as those times was, he engaged with you so much at that time before running back to work that you enjoy every bit of it. So it was more of making the time as quality, not just the presence. Because of how the ministry started expanding, he knew that the time to spend, the quantity was not there. So he focused more on the quality of time to spend with us. And it was always amazing. Bishop Abbey's um, service is exemplary in every way. Um, his doggedness, his um, um, tenacity. Um, for example, going to plant a church in a place like Maidugri, uh, a place where people consider as hard ground and breaking the ground there. And then Kaduna and then Abuja is um, very, very impactful. So once you see his tenacity, you see his consistency, you see his tireless drive, loyalty to duty, unassuming nature and exemplary stewardship. It's very inspiring. And I believe that that has inspired so many people myself inclusive and every other younger minister coming behind. From the time we met Bishop Abiri and his family, it has been a most encouraging journey, a most uh, amazing journey, and it has helped in our relationship with our other Bishop David Oyedepo. Praise God. I see um, Bishop Abiyoye as an exemplary pillar of kingdom stewardship. Beyond just being a spiritual father, he is also our mentor who has taken responsibility to ensure that our well-being is of concern to him and how we make progress in life as parents and even as our, for our children. We just see your phone ringing at 11.30, 12.30 and you're asking, ah, who will be calling me by this? When you pick it up, it's Bishop. We'll be wondering what sort of man is this, having all these responsibilities upon his shoulders, and then getting up at this time, he will be looking for you, to ask after you, after your health, after the health of the children, what progress you have made in life today, for the next one year, what is your plan, second year, two years, three years, five years, making you to ensure that you have a goal on a daily basis. I've never seen somebody like that. Indeed, a great man of God, I must say, deeply committed to, the, to his calling. I had had a great impactful ministry, which I want to say that I'm a beneficiary. So I got to know him when I joined Living Faith. The first day 
I was in that service which he ministered. Actually, at the end of the service, it was irresistible for I and my family to eventually commit to living faith. And uh, since then, it's been like a family friend. So he carries our problems, our burdens, our spiritual and physical, as uh, if they were his. When I became speaker, he was then the pastor at uh, Goshen. And uh, you remember the early days of our leadership in the House of Representatives was a bit turbulent. So as the father as he is, we sat down together to look at the issues. And then he told me, look, forget about everything. It doesn't matter what anybody is saying, anybody is doing. All I want is for you to go and study the book of Daniel. To some extent, um, my leadership in the house was uh, on account of this counsel that he gave. And uh, it is a matter of consensus that the Eighth Assembly in Nigeria has been the most productive in history. And it couldn't have been possible without the counsel of uh, uh, my daddy, Bishop Abiyoye. Um When my husband was the speaker, uh, in the year 2015, I had challenge of health. From nowhere, I had a call from him. And then he, as if he was there with me, he now began to pray. I didn't tell him that this was the kind of challenge I was in. He began to speak the word, rebook the spirit of sickness, and began to, to, to command that the storm be stilled. He said, peace be still. I felt as if they brought out something out of me. When the, the emergency vehicle came, I, I, I was reluctant to go back to the hospital because I instantly started feeling better. When we wanted to build our first home in Kaduna, Bishop now said, God will do a quick one. The following day, he dropped cement there mm. at the site. And Bishop Abio kept on following. How far? How far? This project, within 10 months, everything was perfectly done. That is Bishop Abiyue for you. I depended so much on my eyeglasses for my sight before. But since the 13th of September 1994, during the victory celebrations in Cardinal, I do not have to use the glasses again and enjoy perfect health because of his teachings. Receiving counseling from him one-on-one, -on -one, going into his office when I was in the middle of a particular decision or challenge and ask him, how, how do you navigate in these particular matters? And his counsel was uh, fresh breath in the sense that he helped me to navigate as to how to do things properly and bring glory to God as to the things I sensed the Lord was telling me at the time. He is my angel in human form. I met him the first time in 1999. I met him that day. I borrowed 400 naira to come and listen to him. And uh, the text of the message is uh, focus for lifting. And he said, be focused. And I started applying what he was saying. <sighs> May God bless him. The birth of our last child. He was born with a, a bed deformity. And professors of medicine and surgery said, this kind of cases, the child, even if the child survives, the child will not be able to talk, and not reason well, will not be able to eat any solid food. Will just be a beatable child. And there was no point keeping such a child alive. The best thing is to donate the child as a specimen for them to kill the child, dissect the child, I use her to teach medical students. But Bishop Bayer stepped in and said, no, it cannot happen. And he has carried that case on his head all through up to this moment, in all night prayers, in counseling, in physical cash, and in so many ways he has gotten involved to be sure that child stands and fulfills destiny. The greatest knowledge of life is the knowledge of who you are. And interestingly, who you are is who God is. For 38 years, he has devoted himself to God's work, working in multiple capacities in the Living Faith Church, epitomizing dedication, commitment, love, sacrifice, servanthood, and loyalty. While some stories truly do end, some just continue to transit from one paragraph, one page, one chapter to another. By 
official um, provision for retirement um, after 60, which I graciously appreciated, I've exceeded with uh, a few years. Please, you will join me this afternoon and welcome this my die-hard follower, Hassan, ordained to stand by me, I think from the foundation of the world. Now, he has been with me before the mandate was delivered. So he came earlier than the mandate. He must be part of the mandate that God ordained. He's gone with me on motorbike. He's gone ahead with me running to where I'm coming to let them know I'm coming home, know that I'm not coming. And he has partaken of every bit of grace that God has made available to this commission. It's never caused me pain, no? but this one covenant son never caused me pain. It's not a departure from relationship. Like I always tell people, my journey with Bishop Widipo began informally on relationship. The years of service is formal and it's normal. You know, the official engagement has a lifespan. My joy is meeting with God's servant, Bishop Oedipo, uh, who has been a great blessing to my life. In terms of offering brotherhood, shepherdhood, apostleship, uh, great lessons, great motivation. He said in one of his narratives that God said to him, follow this man. Amen. And that has continued for over 40 years now. Amen. So one is divinely orchestrated. Mm -hmm. Secondly, he chose to obey. Mm -hmm. God never forces instructions on anyone. Mm -hmm. Each one makes his choice to obey or disobey. Yes. Thirdly, I had a clear witness in the spirit that God sent him to me. Amen. And that has been proved over time. Amen. And finally, we share a lot of common spiritual virtues, mm -hmm. such as undying passion for God. Yes. Tireless passion for things of the kingdom. Yes. And a burning passion for souls. My bosom son in the gospel, Bishop David Abioye, who is a carrier of the mandate, who has been with me all of his life, he can complete any decision I'm making. If I stop one quarter away, he can deliver the three quarter remaining. The spirit of God is in him, and the spirit upon his father is on him. I'd like you to watch out for that. Last week, while we were taking steps here, God gave me 1,240 converts and gave him 868 converts in Abuja. I closed yesterday with 281 souls for the day. He closed yesterday with 223 souls for the day. We are just operating on the same wavelength. I've never given him one word and said, don't tell nobody till now, from 1980 to this moment. I am thankful to God that we met Bishop Oyedepo to also serve. And we were ready, we, were, we served all our life in winners to the glory of God. We serve in spirit, in truth, and in everything you can think of, we used to serve. The whole body to serve spirit, soul, and body. And we thank the Lord that Bishop Oyedepo taught us what service is all about. We are grateful unto God for meeting him. My husband started serving with Bishop Oyedepo before he got married to me. 
She's been with him for 43, 44 years. Now, I came in, maybe I will say, 40, 41 years. Ever since we have held ourselves and we are serving to the glory of God. And we are living happily together. No each of any kind. No issue. No. God has helped us. There is no matter that is taken anywhere to help us resolve. So, relationship continues, but it's just an exit from the systemic policy and provision. And so, relationship continues, and which is what I believe should happen just anywhere. Relationship cannot be broken. It's just like, you know, uh, everybody grew up in a home. By the time came, you said step aside, away from home. But that doesn't mean that you have left the home. You still return back home. Everybody's excited. You feel a part of it, even when you are away. Communication which is the heartbeat of relationship continues. <laughs> so it's not a transition of uh, uh, throwing away the past or walking away from the past, but it's expansion, some spread, some new innovation within, uh, within the current happiness and situations. Thirty-eight years of service, thirty-eight years of fellowship, thirty-eight years of impact. The next chapter. There is no self-made man. And even though God is the one who makes people, he does so through the instrumentality of men that we see and relate with. Bishop Abioye made of himself of no reputation. The struggle to make a mark, not the struggle to make a name. You didn't come my way, God sent you my way and God sent me to you. The path of the just shines brighter and brighter. You haven't seen anything yet. The best is here to come. Proclaim upon you tonight the blessings of your Father shall keep prevailing. You'll never know a setback in your life in the name of Jesus. <laughs>